My name's Ewan Angus. I work with Amy at the Fourth Road Bridge. I'm the major bridges director here with the contract we have with Transport Scotland, which is to look after the, the Fourth Road Bridge, keep it open and keep it in good repair and, and generally keep it in tip-top condition. The Fourth Road Bridge is a very important bridge to the people of Scotland. It's a two and a half kilometre long suspension bridge, um, which at the time of construction in 1964, is probably the largest suspension bridge outside the USA. The uh, main span is just over a kilometre long. Uh, the bridge itself sits 50 metres above the water. The two main cables which hold the bridge up each have over 11,000 wires inside them. So the, the two cables are, are 600 millimetre diameter cables but they're made up of 11,000 individual wires and that's an awful lot of wire. If you laid that wire end to end it would go around the world from where we are here and back twice, which is a, a fair amount. The main characteristic of a suspension bridge is it has to accommodate uh, fairly large loads but also move to accommodate fairly significant movements as well. But to, to illustrate that, when the wind is at its strongest, the middle of the bridge can actually move horizontally by about seven metres. So uh, put that into context, if you're driving on one carriageway of the bridge, if you look at one of the kerbs, that kerb moves to where the other one is, which is an awful lot of movement, but you don't really notice it when you're on the bridge because it's so big. The, 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 the main span of the bridge can also drop by the order of two metres when it's fully loaded with HGVs and such like. Prior to 1964, there was a ferry in place, so you had the face with the alternative of a, a 22 mile long journey around Via Gincardin or the ferry. So um, having the fourth road bridge in place made an enormous difference to, the, to, to Central Scotland in 1964 and has been steadily used ever since. The traffic has grown beyond all expectations, carrying uh, up until now 70,000 vehicles a day, including 7,000 HGVs, which is an awful lot of vehicles. In simple terms, there's around about 100,000 people rely on the Fourth Road Bridge to get to their work in the morning and to get home at night. Now that the Queen's Ferry Crossing is open, the vast majority of those people are going to use the Queen's Ferry Crossing. And in order to help manage the traffic and get a more reliable journey time for public transport, um, the Fourth Road Bridge is going to be retained as a public transport corridor and work as part of a managed two bridge strategy where the Queen's Ferry Crossing carries lots of the cars and HGVs and most of the public transport, taxis, buses, etc, motorbikes go on the Fourth Road Bridge which will help share the traffic to some degree but will also help people on buses and using public transport have a more reliable journey time, they won't get caught up in all the other traffic. The importance of the Fourth Road Bridge up until recently has been really brought into focus when we had an emergency closure situation in December 2015. We, we discovered that one of the end links which connects the span of the bridge onto the, one of the main towers had actually snapped, at which point we had to close the bridge. The Scottish economy were considered to be losing around a million pounds a day at that point. An opportunity for civil engineers in Scotland to show what, to showcase what we could do. And what we did was the best, some of the best work we've ever done. We had to get the bridge open as quickly as possible. We, we, we mobilised a team almost immediately of 400 people, including 150 civil engineers from mostly locally and from other parts of the UK as well, to quickly come up with a solution as what we needed to do to get the bridge open again. And we managed to do something like 18 months work in 21 days. And we got the bridge open again to 90% of road users just before Christmas. And I think it was, it's something we we're all extremely proud of in terms of an engineering achievement. Fair to say that the people who relied upon the fourth road bridge being there probably never really gave it a second thought as to how it got there, what civil engineers did to get it there in the first place, what role civil engineers played in keeping it going. They only really notice these things, and rightly so, they only really notice these things when they're not there. And, and the role of civil engineers suddenly came into sharp focus and we, we delivered. And it was a really, really rewarding thing to work on. We were are, are delighted to receive recognition for what we did. We, we received the Saltire Society ICE Award for the greatest contribution to Scotland, which was uh, the, the civil engineering project that made the biggest difference in the year to the lives of people in Scotland. And it was the first one. We were absolutely delighted to win that. Moving on from that, the Institution of Civil Engineers last year had their inaugural People's Choice Award, which was the project in the UK and indeed beyond which the people 
of the UK voted for the most popular civil engineering project that made the biggest difference. And we won by a significant margin. We almost got as many votes as everyone else put together, which is something we, as civil engineers here at the Fourth Broadbridge, are incredibly proud of. I think we would certainly try to use that to encourage people. If you are considering a career in civil engineering, it is a very, very rewarding career. It's, there are lots of jobs, but this job's different. You can make a difference here. You, this job gives you a chance to change the world. There aren't many jobs where you can make a difference and change people's lives and change the world for the better, but this is one of them. And as illustrated by what we did here, you can come in and look at something like that and say, I did that.